you explain what your feelings were like, the anticipation of making your debut? And um, I know, as you know, as you were giving high fives to the students, it looked like you finally cracked a smile over there. So oh, <laughs> what, yeah, what were I'm all the emotions like tonight going through it? Uh, the emotions was incredible. Like playing for my home state, finally getting out there and just competing and having a, like the jersey on, like for real, like this game like really counted. It was um, tremendous. Um, I just wanted to come out and play hard. Um, Coach Underwood got on me a lot, said that my defense from the exhibition wasn't good enough. He yelled at me all week, so the only thing I could do was just come out and try to perform, and um, I think I played okay. Aaron, we talked about this being your last first game. You kind of let a little emotion show after a couple of those three-pointers. What was tonight like for you? Uh, it was great. Uh, just my teammates finding me, you know, everybody playing together, everybody getting a little of the action. Uh, you know, just being out there with those guys, I mean, it, it means everything to me because, you know, I love these guys. I love this team. Just each of you, what would you learn about your team? Uh, just playing for real for the first time this season, playing with this group together, what would you learn about your team? I mean, we had the opportunity to play fast. Uh, a lot of guys who can handle the ball and grab rebounds. Uh, big guys box out, point guards come in and grab rebounds, and then we're gone. Yeah, a lot of teams don't see that. And so the fact that we're able to do that is to our advantage. I learned if I want to assist, drive and kick to AJ. <laughs> That's what I learned. Scott. I guess for both of you, maybe after the exhibition game, weren't totally pleased with how that went. What was maybe the biggest difference in, in how you played tonight? Oh, I mean, I think we played much, much better. I mean, the exhibition, we was out of line. We wasn't really playing hard. I mean, we got a lead and we got relaxed. Um, but this game, we play hard from start to finish, no matter the score, because at the end of the day, it's all about getting better. So I think we came out. We, we played good. We still got some um, some things we can, we can get better at, but at the end of the day, um, it's a great start. I also had the best. <laughs> I owe just 18 points in your debut. Just what did you see out there that allowed for you to have this sort of performance on your first game? Um, it's just a system how we practice hard. I mean, it's for me to get in the lanes, um, it's much better and much easier when my teammates are out spaced out ready to shoot, so I really could just come and play my game. Um, Coach Underwood never um, made me doubt my abilities. Um, he always told me to just play the way I know how to play. And as um, the game got going, I mean, I, I wouldn't lie. Like, from the beginning of the game, I was nervous, playing for the first time, really, in front of um, everybody. Everybody, so. But it was fun after I got jailed in. I'm wondering what you guys thought of Georgie's technical foul. I mean, there's a time and place for it for Georgie, but, uh, you know, he's a personality guy. Uh, he plays hard. He brings that. So, I mean, a little chippiness out there, well, it's not going to hurt anybody. Uh, definitely he has to learn his boundaries, but, you know, we'll work with him on that. I love it because at the end of the day, every good team got that one player. Like, if you look at the Warriors, they got Draymond. If you look at the old Bulls team with Jordan, they had Dennis Rodman. So, at the end of the day, you always just need somebody that you know got your back, a bruiser, who at the end of the day, I know that, that they're behind me. I know George, they're behind me 100%. Here you go right here. Look at him. <laughs> George. <laughs> Look at him. <laughs> I know he got my back. There was a stretch where you guys forced seven consecutive turnovers and you had 26 for the game. What do you guys see in the other team when those turnovers are starting to pile up? What kind of, what do you see in their demeanor when those, that starts happening? Um, I mean, when we turn people over, I mean, they, they get tired because then we get start, we start to run, and you know that's how our defense is. You know, we want to turn people over so we can get out and create offense. But uh, you know, with that, that's being in line. You know, that's getting rebounds. That's uh, helping people on the rotations. You know, we got to get better at that. We just have to play hard. I mean, at the end of the day, we know that if you're not in line, if you allow a catch, <clears throat> man, Coach Underwood will sub you out here, yell at you, and no one wants to get yelled at. So at the end of the day, we just try to play as hard as we can, and um, that's something that I expect for us to continue to grow. Jeremy. Georgie, what was your first game like? And can you take me into that technical foul? Uh, first game, uh, hey, how you doing, guys? Uh, <laughs> first game was great, I think. Uh, we got the W. That's the most important thing. Um, I got technical. You know, I talk a little bit, you know. So I was talking too much. I shouldn't have talked that, that much. And then ref warned me to be quiet. But then I said another word and uh, that I shouldn't have not said. And then I got I got attacked. But yeah, that's it. Jim. Georgie, first half, 10 rebounds. Just talk a little bit about what you were seeing down low there. Oh, <laughs> 10 rebounds. Um, I mean, uh, the last three practices, coaches really pushed me hard. Okay, George, you have to rebound. George, you have to rebound. George, you have to rebound. So 
uh, it was on my, in my mind going into the game, okay, first thing I have to do is just to rebound. So I just, um, I was aggressive on the glass. We needed that, and then it just happened. Yeah. Scott? When Iowa has the ball, maybe in transition, and yeah, it's you know, driving down the court, what, what do you see during that? Like, how maybe, yeah, I don't want to say unstoppable, but, but close is that? I mean, I have a time thinking he's going to score it in transition because, I mean, that's just the type of player he is. He's gifted in that way. But, uh, you know, when he has it, I'm like, okay, I'm getting to this corner because I know if they collapse on him, then boom, he's going to hit me. And uh, I know that goes for all our point guards, but, you know, him specifically. Back here on the side. Uh, Georgie, uh, last game you had your minutes cut short a little bit with foul trouble. Uh, tonight you didn't have a foul in the first half. Uh, were you kind of focused on staying out of foul trouble tonight, and uh, how, how are you able to do that? Uh, I always say it's like kind of a joke, but it's kind of serious. I always say stay focused, stay focused. So going into a game, as I said, like I had two things. Stay in line, as coach says every time. I was staying in line um, and getting rebounds. And staying in line helps uh, to not get, get fouls. And then so basically I was just staying in line, getting rebounds, and not foul. It just happened. Like just naturally, it just happened. So hopefully I uh, keep going like that, not fouling, staying on the floor. So, yeah. Um, for Georgie, it um, looked like you were really comfortable facilitating from the top of the pinch post in the offense. How do you feel that you can help the, uh, the offense in that, from that position on the floor? Oh, uh, I mean, um, coach put me in that position to facilitate from there, and guys trust me there. They pass me the ball whenever I ask for it or whenever they feel like passing to it, uh, to me. So they just pass to me. I face up. I just play basketball. It's just natural. Shannon? I'm going to steal two questions. <laughs> That's okay. Um, I when you sat down at the in the bench during like one of the last timeouts, and Coach Underwood talked to you for a little bit when the other guys were huddled. What and he ended it with like patting you on the back. So I'm guessing it was positive. <laughs> so so what did he say to you? I mean, he started off. He was yelling at me. He was saying that okay. I missed three three free throws in a row. And he was saying like I'm too good of a player to uh, miss free throws and to get in tonight and go shoot some more free throws. But um, it wasn't nothing too serious. I mean, Coach Underwood. I love the way he coached, and I just love him as a person. So everything he take, I just take it in. And I'm just after this, I'm just going to the gym and shoot some more free throws. Oh, I was wrong. I thought I was congratulating you. <laughs> oh, no, <laughs> so. he was saying I missed free throws. That's all. Um, and Aaron, uh, it, so much from the outside, it seems like there's so much unknown about this team with so many new guys. How would you describe the chemistry on this team and, you know, some of what we saw tonight about, you know, the, the way you guys work together and the assists and transitions and how, how it's kind of all come together? I mean, the best way to explain that is just, you know, see how it develops throughout this year. Um, the guys, you know, it's a close group of guys on and off the court. So um, just seeing that, you know, the way we share the ball, the way we like to get up and down, the enthusiasm on the bench. I mean, the bench is going crazy. I, you know, I love that. You know, so like me, when at the end of the game, and I can get over there with those guys, you know, just supporting everybody, it, it's a family. And so that's what's going to show uh, when we play and from here on out. Derek? Io, oh, you've shown confidence in your three-point stroke here early. How much improvements have you made there from the end of your high school season to now? Oh, tremendous, tremendous improvement. Um, I just, it's all about confidence, just getting reps up. That's it. That's all it is because at the end of the day, it's really no – like if you look at so many shoes, like Steph Curry, a great shooter, and Ray Allen, a great shooter, but they shoot different. So at the end of the day, it's just mentally I just told myself that, okay, I don't have a um, – like I don't have a perfect form, but at the end of the day, it's all about how I trust in my shot. So I just got in the gym consistently and just kept shooting, just keep shooting every day. <laughs> And um, it, at the end of the day, when you, when you keep shooting it, in your mind, it becomes mental. And then once you get one, once you see one go in, then you shoot it again. You see another one go in. Then that, your confidence just boosts up from there. Aaron, the pace of the game, especially in the first half, was just ridiculous. Have Have you seen that kind of fast play before d during your time here at Illinois? No, <laughs> I have not. Uh, we got a lot of athletic guys who just, you know, get out and run. Uh, and that's under his system. Get out and run. He kept telling us, run, run, run. Like, literally. Uh, I mean, we trust that, you know. When you see somebody, you know, getting a three because they ran, that makes you want to do it. Or Georgia, you know, running the paint. You know, we can hit him even. Like, it's just so much that it just opens up so much when you run. I, I want to follow up about uh, old Bulls guys that you used to watch. I'd sort of like to know how far back your study of the game goes, because obviously that was before you were born. Uh -huh. And after you've answered that, I'd like to know from Georgie, who he watched, I wouldn't assume that they were Americans or from Chicago, but, but I'd kind of like to know from both of you. Um, I love basketball. Like, I'm just a basketball guy. So 
you know, I always talk basketball like in a barbershop or with my dad. So I would say I could go all the way back into maybe like like the Magic Johnson era. I might know some players before that, like if they were just like great players. But like from really like the Magic era, that's really what like I start studying because I try to take little pieces of every one game implement implement into my, my, my game currently. So I just watch like so many different great point guards, just how they pass, like like John Stockton, I mean, we're a different type of player, but the way he passed, how the way he put the ball in his teammates' hands for them to be successful, I try to take little things. So I've just been like a basketball junkie and trying to get as much knowledge as I can. <laughs> so when I was a kid, like five years old, I wasn't bad watching basketball at all. But then I started watching End One Mixtapes on YouTube. <laughs> so my favorite guy to like growing up to like 14, my favorite guy was Hot Sauce. <laughs> <laughs> he do, like he uh, he's still one of my favorite players, Hot Sauce. Um, so I learned a lot from him. But now I, <laughs> now I watch a lot of NBA since I'm here uh, in the U.S. I watch um, my favorite player is Nikola Jokic. Um, I kind of try to play like him, impact the game like he does. Um, I just watch a lot of players, like he said. I watch like just many different players. I watch point guards, big man, anybody. But um, yeah, you gotta stay focused on hot sauce, you know. What sport did you watch the most as a kid? Uh, basketball. I had uh, we had a professional basketball club where I grew up, and um, I would just watch all the games there, and just on YouTube, hot sauce, you know. <laughs> we have time for another question before we. He's there. All right. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you. A lot of things to like tonight. Um, very, very pleased with uh, 22 assists. Um, I think that's something that this team is capable of on a lot of nights. We had probably another 8 to 10, I can't wait to watch the film, what I call hockey assist, where we just made the extra. Uh, this team is unselfish and 69% uh, the second half, and we played it a little slower pace uh, just simply because of, of the score, but I um, uh, felt very good about that. It was great to see Georgie, 10 rebounds. Um, we need that from him, there's no doubt. And uh, then I think the three-headed monster, those three guards, um, all had their moments and did some positive things. And I liked our defense the first half. And parts of the second half, I thought the turning point was we threw our little three-quarter court, one, two, two, and um, you know, got him sped up a little bit, got him out of sync, shortened the shot clock um, for them, and then we just, you know, we were able to convert. And uh, so I thought that was um, something we've been spending a lot of time on, and it's uh, it's nice to be able to play some guys. Allen uh, tweaked his knee. I don't even know what day. Sunday in practice, I guess. So, so he didn't practice this week. We held him out. He'll be fine. He'll be back in practice on on Sunday. Um, Sama violated a team rule, uh, and so you know we didn't uh, we didn't play him tonight. So, um, you know those guys will both be back. And uh, overall, I'm very pleased, and and I think we showed some growth, uh, especially at the offensive end. And and uh, we'll continue to work as we got a great Georgetown team coming in on Tuesday. Questions? <clears throat> Jeremy? Brad, I, I owe his first game, puts up and fills the box score like that. What, what stood out to you about how he did in his debut? His rebounding. Because we've been, we've spent a lot of time in the last few days talking about rebounding the basketball. And, and you know, he's a guy that, that when we play, uh, those three guards together, he's a guy that has to give us some, some rebounding. And um, it's, it's a little unusual for him. It's something new, uh, especially on the offensive end, to go rebound the basketball. And uh, uh, I think that shows how cerebral he is, how willing a participant he is to winning, and, um, you know, as he did that. And, and then, you know, in the open court, I owes a ton. I mean, he's got a variety of moves to go with his speed. He's got size. He hits floaters. He hit threes tonight. Um, but, uh, you know, as, as well as he played offensively, I thought he set the tone early defensively uh, on K.J. Riley. And uh, um, so, you know, yeah, 
pretty good first night. Scott? Well, and just from the, the sound of it of what he said is his night might not be over. He seems he got some free throws to shoot maybe. Yeah. Oh, he was terrible. Um, he never misses free throws. And, uh, yeah, he and Trent, and, and I think that's something that uh, and he just looked like he was rushing him. He didn't look really comfortable up there. And, uh, you know, I think he had a, you know, he's he, in, in all of our practices, I think he's shooting over 90% at the line. And uh, so, yeah, we've got to get he and Trent there. Uh, 7 of 14 was the, the real big glaring negative tonight. And uh, um, we got to clean that up. Craig in the back. How pleased were you with the first half, the way they came out and kind of put the game to rest there at halftime? Yeah, I was really pleased. I think it was, it was um, sustainable effort, and that's something that that we're looking for every possession. And and you, we know teams when we play them, they're going to have some package to handle our pressure, and so they're always going to be somewhat effective early in the game. Uh, it's just a matter of us sustaining that for the next 12 minutes or the next 10 minutes, however long that is, and we'll eventually wear on you. And uh, uh, you know, I thought tonight was a great example of turning defense into offense and easy points. And uh, and then Aaron got going, and AJ was 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 terrific. And uh, they were playing zone, and uh, you know, AJ's a guy that uh, once he hits one, can make four or five, six in a row pretty quick. In the back, we'll stay in the back. Uh, Coach, uh, what did you say to uh, Georgie after he picked up that uh, technical foul? Don't say that anymore. And I don't know what he said, but he obviously said something. And so I'll, fi I'll find out. I'll talk to the official to find out what, what was said. But, you know, that's, you know, it's, 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 it's something we obviously can't do. When uh, you guys kind of three-point lead at halftime, does that change the way you evaluate the second half and kind of what happens? No, no. Uh, because we did this the other night against Illinois Wesleyan. And I don't know what, we, what our lead was at half. Um, 20, whatever it was, and, and then we just didn't play. And um, uh, it was about going out and, and, and you know, playing the full 40. And it gave us an opportunity to really hone in. We tried to hone in on our spread, on our, on our half-court offense a little bit and, and, and have some patience and, and get great shots. We did that. We shot 69%. And uh, uh, we took our opportunities when they were there, and Iowa was terrific doing that, and, and Dre was terrific doing that. And uh, that led to a pretty efficient second half. Um, Teppy and Jones got uh, heavy minutes in the first half, especially kind of playing the top of that uh, three-quarter court pressure. Do you kind of envision him as your tip of the spear in that situation? or Pretty long, isn't he? Yeah, he's, uh, he's got great length. He's a guy that um, uh, can really be bothersome. Um, and then, you know, I'm really happy for him because Tev spends a lot of time extra time watching film he's uh, he's he's is in the gym as much as anybody and it was good to see him get going offensively a little bit i saw i think we saw uh some glimpses of what he's capable of shooting the basketball off the dribble uh, you know he's a very good ball handler for his size so uh i'm happy a good good first night for tef brad <clears throat> Seem to do a much better job of not leaving shooters open and not letting him get penetration down the middle tonight. Um, was that obviously a point of emphasis after the Wesleyan game? A huge one. And we still gave it up about five times in the last six or seven minutes. And uh, um, again, it's different lineups. But uh, yeah, it's something we've got to clean up. And, and, and it, again, ball pressure is a key for us. We have to be elite with our ball pressure. And we have guys who can do that. And uh, when we when we la get lax with that, that's what happens, and and uh, uh, we got to be better in our assignments. We're gonna go back here first. Coach Kipper Nichols is five for seven the field tonight and thirteen points, but it seemed like he had you know kind of a quiet night in the midst of everybody else scoring. How would you evaluate his play today? Well, I, I think the one thing people need to understand about Kip, his last game was one for ten, and as and as soon as he got out of the out of this arena. Uh, which was actually fairly quick. Uh, he went straight to Aubin and was in the gym shooting. And, um, you know, that's not, I'm, I'm not sure that was going to happen a year ago. And so, you know, his, his, his performance was, 
was was really really solid. I got a lot of confidence in Kip. We need more than one rebound at half from him, but um, yeah, I'm I'm pretty pleased with uh, with Kip's play tonight. Uh, with Iowa's length and size, what kind of flexibility does he give you defensively? Well, he can guard multiple positions. Um, you know, he's got great foot speed, and the thing that's very deceiving with Iowa's is is his hand speed. Um, he's got tremendous tremendous quickness, and uh, it gets him in trouble a little bit. You know, I think, you know, everybody's still learning him, uh, including us, officials, and everybody else. And, you know, he's got, um, uh, you know, he, he's able to poke things away and, and do some things because of that, that quickness. And, uh, and yet he can guard small forwards. He can guard, you know, off guards. And, and, and he's getting better every day away from the ball, which is uh, when he's not on it, you know, he's, he's, he's got to continue to grow there. Still on the defensive end, there was a sequence in the first half, really fast paced. Seems like your guys all maintained their coverage. They were, they were in their spots. I have to think that you were probably pretty happy with how they executed. Yeah, there was about a six or seven minute stretch there where I was pretty, pretty, pretty happy. Um, just simply because it was, we got stuck in some rotations a couple times, but man. We cleaned it up with a charge, or we cleaned it up with diving on the floor for a loose ball, or we, um, we got them to throw it out of bounds, or we forced to travel. Uh, that's that's what happens. That's what that's what our pressure does, and it creates uh, it cre creates a 10-0 run or a 12-2 run or whatever it is. And you have two or three of those, and and uh, uh, you put yourself in pretty good position. Gina, one of the first things Io said when he was asked about his emotions. Going into the game today, he talked about his, the pride in wearing an Illinois jersey and playing for his home team. Um, when you have a player who, who has that, along with being really gifted, talented player who delivers, I know you're going to say he has to keep it up, but, but what can that mean for um, your program to, to kind of have that package? Well, he, he set a tone in coming here. And, and I think it means, um, I, don't want, I don't want to discount what it means to other players to play here. But there's a little more emphasis on, on wearing that jersey. And, uh, um, I, you know, the one thing that Io has is extreme pride. And not just in himself and his family and his city and his state, uh, but, but this university. And uh, that becomes very evident when you, when you talk to him. And, and uh, he chose to come to this university because he wanted to play here. And, uh, you know, the systems lined up and had to f happen to fit. And... And uh, so it means a great deal to him, and uh, maybe more than 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 we even know. Uh, but uh, I know he's a he's a wonderful young man and a and a kid with a lot of pride, and and uh, it does mean a lot to us. And and uh, you know we got it. We've the character piece of what we go after, Shannon, in recruiting is that we look for the guys who want to play in in our system at our university, and and. Io exemplifies that. Scott. You mentioned Tuesday the, the drill that maybe still would have been going on. Now, if you hadn't you know, stopped it, what did you think about the other team's execution offensively tonight? Well, I, you know, they, I think they they tried to just uh, maybe get away a little bit from what they do in terms of their half court. You know, they set in in in, in their scrimmage. They set a lot of stagger screens. They set. Uh, uh, you know, some quick flip things uh, with dribble handoffs. They weren't able to do those things. Uh, so they basically just spread it and drove us. And uh, it was five out. They tried to back cut us early. I thought uh, we did a great job of getting to the ball. So uh, when we get teams to not run what they practice, it's advantage us. And, uh, you know, I felt we did a good job of that tonight. Aaron, seven rebounds again, but I mean, Io with six and Tevin with four. I mean, how do you maybe make sure that's happening every night? Cause yeah, we got to keep emphasizing that in practice. I know, I know what I'm getting from Aaron. You know, AJ's, AJ's really, really consistent with what he does on the glass. Um, DeMonte's, for the most, most nights, very consistent. You know, it's those young guys, we got to keep them, we got to keep them going. We're asking them to do things that, you know, on the glass that maybe they haven't had to do. Uh, as a top priority, and uh, we've got to we got to keep working on that. Coach, 
have a guy like Andres Feliz to come off the bench and add a spark for this team? Well, he's been uh, – he's so mature. Okay, that doesn't bother him whether he starts or not. And, you know, you're talking about a kid who's National Juco Player of the Year and won a national championship, and most guys would flip out about that. And he knows he's going to play the same amount of minutes as he does if he, if, if he starts. And I've always looked at maybe the bench and the guys that come off the bench more than I look at who starts because I want productivity in the way we play. And now you're talking about a guy who's, you know, in a scrimmage ex in exhibition and tonight's averaging close to 20 a game or right at it. That's, that's pretty good. And the thing is, his field goal percentage is probably close to 80% in those three. And uh, uh, then he's a defensive guy. He had a couple turnovers tonight that I thought, first time he's made some poor decisions. But uh, gosh, I can't say enough positives about him and his maturity. Anything else for Coach? All right. Thank, Thank you. you.